Greetings and welcome to Quick Dive. Uh, in this first episode, we are going to go through the different oscillator mods found on the Argon 8. For each different oscillator mod, I'll be giving you bare bones examples to give you a uh, better understanding of the exact effect it has on oscillator 1. For those of you who don't know, the oscillator mod uh, feature on the Argon 8 is designated to oscillator 1. However, you should keep in mind that on some of these, depending on which one, oscillator 2 will actually have an effect on that sound. It will affect the, uh, um, the end result. So there's a lot of interplay that can that can happen, and unfortunately, because of the wide array of sounds that can be generated, I won't be able to cover uh, every possible type of sound um, or every type of preset. So um, you know, this is a this is just a quick overview, and um, the you know the general uh, goal here is to get you uh, more familiar and confident with um, determining which oscillator mod you might want to consider using for what type of application, uh, what type of preset. And so you can apply that to your own music and your own style. All right, so let's begin. Uh, we'll start out with phase mod. Um, you know, after a while, I started to notice phase mod is a lot like FM. So phase mod is neutral sweet, FM is sweet and low, um, or vice versa, if you want to think about it that way. Um, but I tend to uh, make um, metallic textures um, using simple... Uh, sine waves, and that can be done just simply by boosting up oscillator mod. A little bit of modulation can go a little bit further. So if you sign the mod envelope to the mod amount of, uh, you know, the, the oscillator mod amount, and create a shape like this, add a little bit of release, and let's add velocity as a source. And velocity will also affect the um, oscillator mod. Or we could have the depth turned down on our mod envelope and then have velocity affect the um, mod envelope amount. So we could try it either way. It's going to produce somewhat similar uh, result. We'd have to have a little bit of a longer decay. Because this is dependent on oscillator 2, you could simply go through all of the different waveforms uh, and wavetables available and try them each out to see which one you like the best. If you want to create something that's more organic, alive, free-flowing, you could try routing LFO 1 to wavetable 2 and turn the rate down maybe around 15 or 10 um, and then set it to free. also make it rhythmic. The last thing I wanted to point out is that as soon as you start to make um, oscillator one, anything other than a sine wave, anything other than something smooth, you will instantly start to hear mids and highs come in. Um, it will be a much more brash, a much more um, kind of crunchy texture. And it'll start to sound distorted. Don't feel bad if a lot of the times your experimentation with phase mod turns into something that sounds like angry wasps or uh, bees, because it happens to all of us. So this is just a quick tip. Work with smooth um, waveforms uh, and then go from there. If you want to crunch it up, just start picking stuff that's a little bit more jagged looking. One particular waveform I like to use for oscillator 2 when I'm using the phase mod effect is sweep. You could route velocity to oscillator 2 waveform or wave table rather position put that to max or put that to min, put that to max. So your wavetable is at zero and then the velocity range will be at max. Let's 
try turning off uh, LFO one to keep it a little bit more simple. <laughs> even make some decent you can even make some decent sounding pads as soon as you want to crunch stuff up and make it a little bit more dubstepy just find those more uh, aggressive sounding waveforms <laughs> Try moving about the wavetables. Here's a good example of a bass I made using the phase mod. Dun. Ring modulation. Ring modulation also takes into account oscillator two. This time it's finding differences between oscillator one and oscillator two and producing something we call sidebands. These sidebands are typically fuzzy and fluttery and sporadic. The, the amount of flutter and kind of movement you get from these uh, using ring mod will depend on the differences between the two. So try using slightly different waveforms and different pitches. Oscillator mod at full will be nothing but sidebands. If you're panned all the way to the mix for oscillator one, all you will be hearing is sidebands. If you have it at 50%, you'll be hearing half of oscillator one and half of the sidebands. Amplitude modulation is kind of similar to this one. It produces sidebands just like ring modulation does. But this time you tend to be able to hear more of oscillator one, no matter what the mix is. Both of these effects can be very fun simply because they rely on oscillator 2, but they're not as drastically affected as phase mod. So you can often find some very nice textures and a lot of great movement just by scrolling through the different waveforms and wavetables. Hard sync and wind sync. Very similar. Wind sync is the more subdued version the easiest way of thinking about it. As you can tell, this one does not rely on oscillator 2. If you use the hard sync or wind sync oscillator mod in a static manner, you can usually create some pretty decent sounding harmonics and a little bit of a metallic-y flavor. Better to have staccato notes for the most part. I will not play Sandstorm, I promise. So when you're making a bass preset, one thing you could consider doing is having a very subtle amount of oscillator mod being modulated by something like a mod envelope, but just a very subtle effect. There it is. Shaper. This is probably the most subdued of all the different oscillator mods. Think of Shaper as a thinning of the waveform. One way you can play with Shaper is just assign both LFOs to it. So I'll assign LFO1 to oscillator mod, 
and LFO2 to Oscillator Mod. Inverter is quite similar to the pulse width modulation effect. Because of this, you can make some pretty neat sounding pads, um, delicate sounding thin sort of textures. Another thing you could think about doing is applying the inverter effect to Y+. Plus. So when you're doing a lead, you can thin it out, keep your joystick at max while you're doing this, and then adjust the oscillator mode. <laughs> Lastly is Sync RM. So oscillator 1 is synced to oscillator 2's pitch. That means if you change oscillator 1's pitch, um, you're actually just adjusting the sync ratio. So this is very much like using the sync effect uh, or the sync mod, except this is sort of a two-part effect because the, os the oscillator mod amount is actually going to be turning up the ring mod effect. So it's uh, you get two controls in this, uh, and then on top of that you can adjust the wavetable of oscillator 2 or the waveform, and uh, there's just tons of combinations. So I'm going to cut to some side footage here and show you some additional uh, combinations that can be used. you can take these with you and apply them to your own music and your own style. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell notification because there will be a lot more content coming out in the coming weeks and months from modal. All right, we'll see you next time.